What is up? It's your boy Johnny Shrevive, BB Promos at Tell Like It Is. Welcome back to another episode of Chain With Me. Today we're bringing you to the blackboard, whiteboard, the whiteboard. And no, we're not doing football plays today. We're gonna go over why it's taking you so long to reach your goals. And this isn't a sales pitch to tell you that I got some solutions to make you get there a lot quicker. I'm just gonna get you there way more efficient. And I thought that my coaching style involves a lot of visuals, so I should probably visually show you in a diagram form of why you're not reaching your goals. Anyway, so I've brought this up before. I've kind of like made this analogy of like the pie chart and I kind of want to show you what I mean by that. But if we're looking at like in terms of like you trying to change your overall physique. So if we're doing like sacroplasm hypertrophy, even myofibular hypertrophy, if we're trying to get stronger or trying to just grow muscle, we need to be efficient doing so. So we have to make sure that our form is on point. So when we're looking at, let's erase this. Let's just say we're training chest, okay? So, here is our pie chart for chest. Today we're chaining chest. Now, when we're looking at breaking up the pie chart, it should look like this. This is chest. All this right here is the chest part of the body, the chest muscle. And here we have, and this isn't like completely like right on, but we're just saying like right here we have triceps. And then here you got your anterior delts and you got your, you know, rhomboids and then creating shoulder depression, you know, lats. And then, you know, from the ground, you know, pushing into the floor, you know, your bottom half, let's say you're like your legs. Because all these guys right here are to help stabilize to make sure that the load stays on the chest. That's what we're trying to do. So it would be like, if anything, this chart would be like, I don't know, 80% of what you're doing should be on that muscle and 20% should be like everywhere else. That's just an analogy. There's no real actual like number specific to how much stabilization muscles should be involved. So don't get all pedantic. Anyway, so we're looking at this, this is what we should look like. This should be like 20%, 80% here and your stabilizers. 20%. And you're like, well, what is that? Why does it really even matter? Well, think about it. If we're trying to grow our physique and if we're looking at sacroplasm hypertrophy, right? So the expansion of glycogen in our muscle, right? Uh, hypertrophy, you'll get like, you know, the by factor of like doing sacroplasm hypertrophy, you'll get stronger in, in a linear fashion in a sense, but you're more so trying to change the overall musculature. You're trying to change your physique. That would be more so of like programming or re, you know, body recomp, right? So if we want to do that, we know that. We know that in psychopathic psycho hypertrophy that we have to, you know, sets are about 30, 45 seconds, around maybe 10 to 15 reps. You're resting for like 60 to 90 seconds. And you got to train the whole muscle twice a week. All of the chest, all of the shoulder, all of the back, right? We got to do that two times a week. That's required in order to change the physique. Now, that's gonna take a lot more time because a lot of the time we look at this, this thing is backwards. And for the most part, it's the complete other way around. From what I have noticed from coaching for the longest time, we end up using, oh, we're training chest today, but then everything else in here, we're also training shoulders and we're training triceps. Guess what? We're gonna train some back too, you know, lower back, because you know, when we get to those hard reps, we're training the erectors. You know, and, and we're not even like, you know, feet are really involved. Like the core is probably working because your feet are probably tap dancing in the air and everything else. The point is, is that we're giving all the stabilizing muscles, those muscles that are, are there to help the main muscle, all the attention in this guy, where we're trying to focus on, I want to build a bigger chest. I need to look bigger. I got a show coming up, you know, in a year and I want to build my chest. And we got this kind of formula going, well, it's going to take you a longer time to build your chest with or without enhancements, period. And just so you didn't know, a lot of things we talk about, I actually break down even further in my free training series that you can find in the description below. I go over the most common mistakes that people are doing today, right now in the gym. So guys, hit the description below and get part of that free training series. Now back to the show. The fastest point from A to B is a straight line. This form is your straight line. Now we can say the same thing for myofibular hypertrophy as well too. You're trying to get stronger. You want to build your chest and get your chest stronger because you're doing, I don't know, a powerlifting meet. And you're spending more of the time training your shoulders than you are your chest. And guess what happens when we start putting the bigger load? Because if we're training, say we're training chest and we're training chest here, and we want to get to a one rep max, or we're training, you know, 75% of our one rep max in sacroplasm hypertrophy, 
and we got a pretty good load going on, but the load isn't on the muscle it should be, it's on the shoulder and triceps. Guess what? Now my shoulder is starting to hurt. My elbow is starting to hurt. Why? Well, it's because we got this thing flipped around. Easy examples too. How about like, you know, legs? People say, man, I'm quad dominant. I hear that all the time. I'm quad dominant. No, you're not. You're just not squatting properly. You're giving all of your hamstring and glutes to your quads when you're trying to do glute movements. I'm squatting, but my quads are taking all of the load. Well, you're not squatting properly. We know that when we're squatting with hip and knee flexion, we're gonna get the most amount of activation in our glutes on the way up. So those who are like quad dominant, probably doing one of these things. They're probably, you know, I need to train glutes today. Or like, you know, for women. I'm doing a show, I'm doing a bikini show. I gotta train, I need to grow my glutes for next season. Or just any woman or man that just doesn't wanna have a flat butt. I need to get my butt bigger. It looks better in jeans. So you go and train and all of a sudden you're training glutes today, you know, squatting and everything else. And for some reason, quads gets the entire, all of it. Like all of it. Quads, don't forget lower back, right? Don't forget, I don't know, um, the neck. When you're doing, when you're, when the bar is on your neck like this and you're doing this when you're trying to get up, let's say neck, the entire neck. I'm making a little bit of a joke here, but it's serious. You see this every day and I guarantee whoever's watching this, they're like, uh, guilty, guilty. Raise your hands if you're guilty, okay? Even those who are probably been following me for a bit, probably still guilty of certain things because we're not focusing on that. I want to give you guys some examples of, you know, what I see all the time. So check this out. We're going to start with chest first. Okay, so. We're sitting on an incline machine and you want to train chest because you're, you know, what's your upper chest because your pec minors are weak. You want to bring them up and we get in. The machine's made to sit in here and we're already going to be in the right position as being here. And we get in, we get our arms here and we're pressing and, you know, okay, cool. This is working. I'm underneath. This is building your chest. Looking from the floor up, I'm engaging my feet all the way through to my core, all the way through to my lats. Again, shoulder depression, right? And I'm engaged, my core's engaged, all those things are there. They're not like stressing a lot, they're just activated. They're there to aid. They're in the conversation, but they're not taking the lead. And then we get our hands underneath, we're stacking the joints, our triceps are on, everything's engaged right now. And then we press. And press. And this is all on my chest where I'm targeting, which is the pec minor. Now, what happens when we do this, now the, what I just did was that 80%, 80% of our muscles being used, 20% of everything else is being, is there to help stabilize. Now this is what happens when we take that and flip it around. We get this, we get this, we get this, and even the shoes. So we're not stable here, and we're pressing, and right now I can feel my shoulder, you see I'm shaking actually. Just me against it, and I'm pressing. And everything right here, as you see, doesn't look right. We're pressing the machine, and it seems like we're doing chest because the machine says chest, and I'm doing this. And these are not exact reps. I see these reps all the time. Or we'll get one of these reps. And then the hard rep comes in, and our back comes off, and we finally and we're. And we're here and here and then, oh man, whew, that was a really good, man, that was a good set. Oh, my shoulder hurt. You know, we get that, right? Obviously, that happens. There is a switch. How long is it going to take you to get to your goals? Or better yet, how many exercises like that is going to take before you start injuring yourself? And guess what? Now you're off the gym and your goals are that much more postponed because you're not thinking about form. So, so let's look at back from that 80% all back, 20% stabilization. So we're here, we grab the weight over top. Hands are right in there. We're not grabbing with the fingers. Sitting ourselves up straight, tight core, core's engaged. A little bit of that shoulder pressure right away, heads up, and straight, and we pull the elbows down, squeeze the elbows up, engage the core, we go, and we're up. Now, let's go to the other way around. What does that look like? (laughs) 
you know, my biceps and my forearms start to hurt. And then at the end of this set, you're like, I had probably like three or four more reps, but my forearm was burned out too quick and my biceps started to hurt. My back's really not even like engaged, but everything else is tired. And that's what we get. How about squatting? You want to go your glutes, but you're quad dominant. This is what your squat should look like from a couple squat standpoint. Shoulders are pressed. Come here. It's going to rotate from the hips. Tight core. Now, I'm quad dominant. That sucked pretending to do bad reps. I couldn't imagine me doing that all the time. How fast am I gonna get to my goals if I'm doing the other way around? When I'm giving the stabilizers too much attention and not the muscle that I'm really trying to target. Anyway, so I thought I'd bring that to you guys because you need to see it, need to hear it, need to see it. I got some, so I came up with a little something that's almost like a tier system. Something that you could think about every single time when you go into your workouts. Something you can kind of prep your mind right away to think about, basically tier system. With the tier system, we get better time management. You're using your energy that much more efficiently. And then in the end, you get results. So think about that next time you go to the gym, why it's important for you to really prioritize proper form. Then there's a question about how do I know if I'm doing the form right? That's coming up next. Anyway guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video guys. If you did, make sure you guys like, subscribe and share. You know, I'm gonna come up with that tell like it is transparent and vulnerable truth. We're coaching If you wanna know what my coaching guys, 15, 30 minutes. Ask me anything, nutrition, training, supplementation, mental health, whatever you just want to see if you're, what you're doing right now is optimal. Let's talk. 50, 30 minutes at the end of the console. I deduct the console off any package you pick. Hit those, and hit the description below, guys, for all those discount codes and promo codes to help change your life and save your life for the better. Also, guys, make sure you guys add me on Instagram and TikTok. Send me your progress pics, your training pics, and your video clips, and I'll repost it for you because you know how it is. Iron Shepherd's Iron, progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace.